Hi everybody and welcome back to SE Aviation. Today we are taking a look at the different types of speeds in aviation. Enjoy! So, the other day I was reading aviation news and saw that a Boeing 747-400 from British Airways had just set a speed record by crossing the Atlantic Ocean at speed as high as 716 knots. But the maximum speed of a 747 is 504 knots. So how did that happen? Well, for any aircraft to produce enough lift to stay airborne, a certain amount of air must flow at a certain range of speeds over the wings. That speed is called indicated airspeed, and it is measured by onboard pitted tubes that are directly connected to the cockpit, where the measurement is indicated to the pilots, hence the name. This is probably the most important type of airspeed for flying, since it is a direct indication of the amount of air flowing over the wings of the airplane. But as an aircraft climbs, the air density around it is reduced. To give you some numbers, in standard atmospheric conditions, there is one kilogram of air per cubic meter at sea level, but at 40,000 feet of altitude, there are only 0.2 kilograms of air per cubic meter. That said, for any aircraft to maintain any indicated airspeed, at high altitudes, of course, it must move faster through the mass of air to compensate for the reduced air density. That speed is called the true airspeed because it is an accurate measurement of how much lateral distance of air an airplane moves per unit of time, no matter how dense is that air. For instance, say we have two cubes of air that are one mile long. One of them is at 40,000 feet of altitude and the other is at sea level. Likewise, two airplanes are going to fly through those cubes of air at a constant true airspeed of one mile per second. Now, what is going to be the indicated airspeed of those airplanes? Well, I have no clue about the exact numbers, but the indicated airspeed of the airplane flying at sea level will be way higher than the indicated airspeed of the one flying at 40,000 feet, because air is less dense up there, so a less amount of air flows over the wings of the airplane flying at flight level 400, even though the true airspeed is the same. So far so good, we have two types of speeds, but there is one more important factor in aviation that I haven't mentioned. Wind. Wind changes everything. Now think of air as water, and of wind as a river and of the ground as the shore. If you travel in a boat at one mile per hour, but the river current is one mile per hour as well, then your speed relative to the shore is two miles per hour. Just like the river moves water, wind moves air, such that if we have a true air speed of one mile per second, but that air is already moving at another mile per second, then our new speed is two miles per second. That speed is called the ground speed and tells you how fast you're moving relative to the ground below. Let's now go to the simulator to see an example of that and one more type of airspeed. Okay, so I am flying the Airbus A320 from Condor, a beautiful livery, and I'm gonna show you the different types of speeds in action. So let's zoom in here in the primary flight display and navigation display, and you will see that our indicated airspeed is 290 knots. So we travel 290 nautical miles per hour. But since we're flying at 20,000 feet of altitude, our true airspeed is higher. It is 388 knots. That is because since we're flying higher, the air density is reduced and we have to move faster through the mass of air in order to maintain the same airspeed. But look that we also have 67 knots of a tailwind, which is also coming sort of from the left. And that is adding to our ground speed. So we have 437 knots of ground speed. So it is very common that these three airspeeds are always different. But today we have one more type of airspeed, which I hadn't mentioned, and it is probably the easiest one, it is the Mach number. It is simply an indication of how much of the speed of sound we are making. Right now we are doing 0.631 times the speed of sound, and airliners usually do about 0.79 or 0.80, but never Mach 1, which is the speed of sound, unless you are the Concorde. Apart from that, from the Mach number, the only thing you need to know is that it varies with altitude, because as air density is reduced, then the speed of sound is reduced as well. And the airplanes must never exceed their limit Mach number, because the shock waves can damage the fuselage. 
So this is the example, let's continue our flight. So to summarize before we go, today we learned the IAS indicated airspeed, TAS true airspeed, GS ground speed and the Mach number which is the percentage of the speed of sound. There is one more speed which is the calibrated airspeed but it is just the indicated airspeed corrected for minimal errors caused by the position of the pitot tube in the airplane but it is more or less the indicated airspeed and is almost never, almost never used by pilots. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye!